Hello and welcome to Airborne's webinar. We're presenting in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. On July 16, 1969, the world watched as Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins left Earth for the face of the moon. As they successfully landed four days later, that remarkable journey was a direct result of hard work, of sacrifice, and technology developments far surpassing what humanity had imagined to that point. Today, Airborne is still very proud to be part of the landing of the first men on the moon and a lot of space programs since. Today, we're pleased to present another first. It's the culmination of more than five years of development and testing, overcoming setbacks, and rallying some pretty brilliant engineering minds towards answering our customers' challenge. Thanks for attending our webinar. My name's David Koenig, and I'm the business unit manager for the space side of our business here at Airborne. I started my career here 25 years ago as an applications engineer, specializing in Airborne products, our technologies, and our capabilities. During my time here, I was also a product manager for our R-Series product for about, about 15 years, and later became the director of product management before entering my current position. I'm really just a product guy. Also presenting with me is Jason Smith, who's our Senior Director of New Product Development and the lead technical mind behind the product we're introducing today. Jason's been with Airborne for 22 years and he's a strong technology innovator who leads the new product design and implementation across all of Airborne's facilities. Prior to his current role in new product development, Jason was an engineering manager for our automation and tooling uh, group. So let's get started. You know, this journey started for us about five years ago when we were approached by one of our major customers and we were asked to solve a specific problem related to their space related products. They knew their problems. They had an idea of the answer and they had a concept of what they wanted, but they didn't know how to get there. So they were just looking for the right company to develop a product they needed. Due to some pre previous uh, development projects we've been involved with with them, they knew Airborne and they knew we had the expertise with our existing technologies and our rugged interconnect offerings. So after just a few meetings, both of us knew we had a good match and a positive path forward. Our customer's previous design used, used uh, fiber interconnects that were pretty difficult to install and that required fiber polishing that often resulted in poor optical coupling and just wasn't a reliable interconnect for their system. You know, in addition, they were using less than desirable optical transceivers that were just weren't achieving their desired performance. So in short, they were looking something looking for something to eliminate their installation problems, you know, as well as some other issues they had for EMI and for weight and including data rates uh, greater than three meters. You know, Airborne's model to market approach was a pretty attractive position for the customer and after our efforts over the last four to five years, you know, we feel we have a truly robust product you know, that will handle the, the environments of space as well as any other rugged environments you know, over the required years of deployment these systems are expected to last. So today we're introducing Airborne's latest product development. Um, it's our Space Rated Active Optic Cable, or SAOC. It's built in our high-speed MicroSci Interconnect platform. So as of this webinar, this is the only fully tested and qualified, space-rated, flight-ready optical cable available on the market today. This system op optimizes size and weight factors in the design, and we made certain AOCs ideal for space flight and the extreme conditions that come to bear during launch as well as the entire mission. You know, before we go into a lot of details, I wanted to give you a brief overview of what an active optic cable or AOC is in case there's anybody here that uh, who may not be familiar with the technology. Commercial grade AOCs are pretty widely available and in use today, uh, mostly in uh, commercial uh, data centers connecting where they connect the servers uh, and networking equipment across distances that uh, exceed the signal integrity uh, capabilities of copper cable. 
So one of the main benefits of AOC is not only the ability to carry that, uh, that signal that distance, uh, but it's you swap the uh, AOC out with a copper cable, uh, unplug the copper cable, plug in the AOC cable into the same exact connector uh, that's on the board or the equipment end. The image on the on the right gives you an overall idea of what the uh, the cable does and the the general feel for how the the signals transmitted. But if you want to get into a little more detail, look into the bottom left hand schematic um, it better does a better job of illustrating kind of the process where the electrical signal is received by a laser diode driver which conditions the signal uh, to the VIXEL. The VIXEL is a vertical cavity surface emitting laser. That VIXEL converts the signal from electrical to optical and sends it light down the fiber uh, that on the other end is picked up by the pin or photodiode and converts the signal back to electrical and then through the trans impedance amplifier. Uh, the trans impedance amplifier then amplifies the high speed data signal uh, for the rest of the system. You know, there are quite a few benefits around an active optic cable. Uh, so talking to that, traditionally when you're connecting two pieces of equipment, you can connect with a copper cable assembly or a fiber cable assembly. Copper cables are pretty widely used in large part because of their ruggedness and their reliability, especially at the inter interface. Um, however, copper can be, can be bulky, heavy, and not suitable for supporting uh, higher data rates over lengths greater than three to four meters. You know, for space flight, it's estimated that the cost to launch a system into space is fifty to $100,000 per pound. Now, regardless of what that exact number is, uh, we need to be minimizing the size and the weight uh, for these crucial space applications. You know, EMI creates problems that are addressed with copper cables with additional shielding, but that adds size, it adds weight and cost, and it also makes the cables less flexible. So given that fiber cables assemblies do a great job addressing the length and the size and the weight and the EMI issues, um, and the combine the ability to transmit the high data rates, you know, up to 100 meters. <coughs> you know, having said that, fiber assemblies also introduce some concerns. Uh, fiber cables utilize glass fiber terminations where the fibers are exposed to fingerprints and to dirt and dust and any other debris. Uh, most manufacturers of space related products address this by fabricating in a clean room environment under strict, pretty strict gui guidelines. Additionally, some traditional fiber assemblies means that the equipment designer has to, uh, they have to account for the, uh, the transceivers on their end of the equipment. It usually adds costs, it's increased complexity and costs of the board while taking up uh, valuable, pretty valuable PC uh, space and power. So at the end of the day, AOCs offer the best of both worlds. Um, you have the benefit of fiber cable, but without the termination or the maintenance challenges that you get with the proven ruggedness and familiar of a traditional rugged mill spec interface copper connector. Increased design flexibility is a key benefit for any AOC and any, for an AOC and any product architecture. Um, engineers using AOCs can design their piece of equipment or their box uh, to accept both a copper cable and an active optic cable so that any equipment in the field can now be installed with either version. You, know, you can install a copper cable assemblies you know, for your shorter runs and then when needed you easily swap out or demate and plug in an active optic cable for your longer runs uh, when you need signal integrity over those distances or simply when uh, there's weight or other factors make an AOC a better option. In either case the board mounted connector stays exactly the same. You know, Airborne's AOCs are available in a pretty wide variety of connector options. The SAOC products we're launching today incorporates our high speed micro SI interconnect. But what's important is the technology in the back of it. it. That technology can be adopted across many other form factors. Uh, we plan to offer this in a high speed, high density Versailles interconnect our Nano-D interconnect, as well as our Series 360 
circular sealed micro uh, connector. In addition to that, we can also provide uh, hybrid versions. Um, the AOC with an airborne Versailles connector on one end and the standard 38 triple nine circuit on the other end. Uh, you know, in addition to all the standard AOC assemblies uh, with both ends terminated to an AOC, we also designed and build, build versions of AOC connectors where you've got an AOC on one end and a passive fiber interconnect on the other end, whether it's an SC or LC fiber or whatever that may be. Uh, you can have now an active optic on one end and a fiber on the other end where you've already got your transceiver on your board. In addition to all that, we can take your AOC assembly and with our sideband signals in our microsci interconnect or other pin counts, you can run a power connector or other data uh, lines down the side of that as needed. Given all that, you know, neither the traditional copper nor traditional fiber interconnects will provide anywhere near that same amount of flexibility. When we ask what applications are suited for the SAOC and the RAOC, the answer is really uh, it's limitless. You know, there are other non-space rated active optic cables available in the market today and you know, they can support higher data rates over the longer distances. And they also check the boxes for weight savings for reduced space and improved EMI protection too. But they fall short is where they fall short is they were designed for controlled environments of the data centers where the temperature and the dirt and humidity they're all tightly regulated and controlled. And these AOCs and RAOCs were designed to operate in anything but controlled environments. You know when you take that and you throw in the shock and the vibration of a rocket launch and and you couple that with the elements of space our qualification requirements were were pushed through the roof um, these things have been through a ton of testing you know both the SAOC and the RAOC products are built on our connector product lines uh, these product lines have years and decades of proven reliability of quality of ruggedness um, all have passed uh, sp space flight heritage you know we have features like multiple points of contacts uh, in high material tensile strengths uh, J standard solder joints uh, material is non outgassing and including with me included with the uh, metal back shells you know all of these identifiers ensure our connectors operate reliably whenever you know, our, our, our folks lives are on the line you know, we'll go into more detail uh, around the thousands and thousands of hours of testing and qualification when they uh, went into these SAOCs, uh, which I believe demonstrates how our SAOC stands far above the commercial grade AOCs. So at this point, I want to turn it over to Jason Smith, who will talk through through the uh, the entire development process. Thanks, David. Airborne space rated and rugged AOCs consist of a protocol agnostic high speed data path that supports up to 14 gigabits per lane. They also include a power interface to supply the AOC and a serial telemetry interface to allow the user to read status registers, which provide valuable information about the unit. The serial interface also allows the user to adjust control registers, which can be used to help shape the data eye for your application. There's also a discrete telemetry interface which provides digital outputs to notify the host of the AOC's readiness and flags. What sets Airborne's SAOC and ROOC apart from the others is the level of testing and analysis we completed um, to really assure mission success. Over the course of a five-year development cycle, we scrutinized several design iterations to assure successful flight delivery. Brass board units were developed to demonstrate the core technology was flightworthy, as well as demonstrate functionality over the demanding environmental requirements of space applications. We created test units to demonstrate test readiness levels, as well as allow our customers the ability to mature their product at a system level. We created engineering development units to thoroughly verify and validate all aspects of the design requirements prior to our final qual and design validation testing. 
We also were able to take this time to validate our FPGA design. Um, we performed design validation testing and life testing of our flight design to assure full requirement adherence and that we were really flight worthy. And these steps assured that Airborne's SAOC was truly ready for flight. This chart hopefully gives you an understanding of how compact we've been able to take all of the rad hard components in both our MicroSci and VersaI space rated AOCs and put them in a relatively small package that can still sustain all of the rigorous environmental and vibration requirements that we have. Airborne's SAOCs and ROCs come with a full analysis and documentation package to su support system level design in. The following list has been approved by the DOD and their prime contractor. We performed a radiation vulnerability assessment, reliability and maintainability assessment, environmental test plans, FAMICA, electrical parts list, worst case analysis. We provide a full drawing package with drawing trees, bill materials, an EMI EMC control plan, stress and dynamics analysis, which include things like thermal stress, auto fatigue, random vibration analysis, shock, fasteners. A full mass properties report has been provided to not only um, demonstrate the mass and the mass margins, but also provide information like center of gravity and things like that so the system level design practices and, and process can take place. We provide a contamination control plan, a venting analysis to assure the device can handle the pressurization and repressurization of testing and flight. We provided mechanical CAD models, a hybrid qualification plan for things like wire bonds, element evaluations of the die level components inside these packages. We've also provided full electrical RF simulation models and testing reports. And we've performed an FPGA independent verification and validation. As David mentioned earlier, Airborne's performed thousands and thousands of hours of testing on our AOCs, which truly allow us to stand up today and present to you the first fully qualified space rated active optical cable. We've completed radiation testing, gamma, proton, heavy ion. We've created EMI emissions testing, thermal vacuum, thermal cycling, thermal life testing, random vibration up to 89 G RMS, pyro shock testing, performance testing, which includes serial telemetry, discrete, discrete telemetry, power, and high-speed data testing, data eye testing over entire temperature ranges. We performed our own independent VIXEL life testing, pin life testing, and temperature and humidity testing. Airborne is currently shipping our space-rated, micro based SAOCs and RAOCs. That'll be followed by a four-channel Versailles-based product that'll be coming to you in late 2019. In mid-year 2020, we expect to launch our fully hermetically sealed space-rated and rugged AOCs, and which will be followed by our Microsci-based fully hermetic product in late 2020. After that, we plan to have our SAOC and RAOC across all of our product lines and eventually into our Micro D's, Nano D's, Series C60's, and other circular products on the market. We also provide fully automated ground test equipment to support integration testing. Our health check light system powers the device, allows for read and write of serial telemetry, read and write of discrete telemetry, and provides a high speed data pass through. The device also runs Airborne's patent pending health check light algorithm, which provides valuable information about the optical link margin of the device. What's next? Is it Mars? Airborne already has product on the Red Planet because we were designed into the Mars rover. But we're ready to take the next step and possibly even another first step because we know men and women will land on other planets or celestial bodies within our solar system. You know, we've done the development work and we've produced a technology able to stand some very harsh testing and we know our product will survive in space environments as well as launch in other very rugged environments. 
Now, the rest is up to the engineering minds with the imagination to dream up another space odyssey and make it happen, just like they did on July 20th, 1969.